Hello, and welcome to this lesson, which will show you how to forecast revenues in your business case. After you have finished this lesson, you will be able to Firstly, choose between the different forecasting methodologies top-down, bottom-up, growth rate and proportion. Secondly, understand how to break down the drivers of revenue. And thirdly, pull all your data sources together to forecast the revenues. When preparing to forecast your revenues, there are three main steps to follow. Firstly, you need to choose a forecasting method based on your business need, how much time you have, and your level of confidence in the data. Secondly, you need to break down the drivers of the revenues so that you can forecast them later. And thirdly, you need to use a spreadsheet to project the drivers and then use them to forecast the revenues. As you move through the rest of the lesson, you will consider each step in more detail. As you progress through the steps, you will build a revenue forecast for the Hot Wheels Motor Company. This will help us determine if the 2022 goal of 7 billion euros in operating income is feasible or not. Please take time to reread the case study background and the tasks at hand. The first step in revenue forecasting is to choose which methodology to use. Using growth rates, or more specifically, compound annual growth rates, is a way of measuring industry growth over a historic period, then using that growth rate to estimate growth in future years. It is easy to compute. You'll refer to this later in the lesson, but a downside of growth rates is that they can ignore the complexities of running an organization, such as seasonal sales variations. And also, past performance is not always a good indicator of future performance. You should only use growth rates in the absence of more accurate data. Using the proportional methodology is where the forecast is computed as a percentage of another figure. For example, the commercial vehicle segment is forecast to be 5% of total revenues. Again, this method is easy to compute, but would not apply if an organization was in the process of adjusting its business unit portfolio. The third methodology relates to the top-down approach, and is where the forecast is derived from the overall market size. It assumes that, given the existing market and potential market growth, your organization can expect to capture a certain percentage share of the market in year one, a greater percentage in year two, and so on. Although relatively easy to compute, it can lead to overly optimistic forecasting. Grounding your forecasting with facts and creating more realistic projections will provide legitimacy to your business case, which leads us to the fourth bottom-up methodology. Although it requires significantly more data and analysis, this is a more strategic approach where you take a real look at your current revenue drivers and see where you can reasonably expect to go with each one. Before deciding which methodology to use, ask yourself the following questions. Firstly, what is the objective of the business case? Not every methodology is appropriate for each type of case. For example, the top-down methodology would not be appropriate for a market share forecast. Secondly, what is your time horizon? If you have only a few hours to give an initial estimate, then the growth rate, proportion or top-down methodologies would be more appropriate. If you have more time, then the bottom-up approach would likely give you a more accurate answer. Thirdly, you will likely have a large amount of data at your disposal, but which data sets give you the most confidence? If you are confident about your growth rate, choose the growth rate approach.
If you are more confident about your price and quantity projections, then choose the bottom-up approach. And fourthly, how much would your choice affect the output? If your choice will not significantly impact the end result, then it is best to use simple methodologies like the proportion approach. For example, if a segment you are forecasting contributes only 1% of the revenues, it would be more practical to use the proportion approach. Now, let's choose the revenue forecasting methodology for Hot Wheels. For the light commercial vehicle segment, proportion is the most suitable approach. This is because the segment only has a small share of the revenues, as shown on the chart on the right. Therefore, you can forecast with a simple method. Share of this segment has been pretty stable at 3%. Therefore, you can assume this proportion will be sufficiently accurate for our revenue forecast. By contrast, for the cars segment, a bottom-up approach will provide the most accurate results. This is because you are able to obtain detailed and reliable data on the automotive segment. And also, this is the largest segment for Hot Wheels, so it is worth putting in the extra effort to be as accurate as possible. After choosing the forecasting methodology, you now need to build a revenue driver tree. This method helps you to easily visualize the underlying factors which can affect your organization's revenue. Start at the top and continue to break each level down into manageable segments. Note, however, that each new level increases the complexity, so end the analysis at a point where you feel you have enough detail before the value diminishes. In Hot Wheels' case, the main revenue drivers of the car segment are car sales volumes and car unit prices, each with a further level of geographic segmentation. This should provide us with enough detail to build an accurate revenue forecast. The next step is to use Excel, or another appropriate spreadsheet, to start building the revenue forecast. The slide shows an example of how this can be done. For the cars segment, firstly input your historical volume and pricing data into Excel. For the light commercial vehicle segment, enter the proportional revenues. Once the historical data has been added, you now need to add reliable volume and price projections. There are several possible sources you can use to forecast the revenue drivers, such as internal organization projections, industry databases, and analyst estimates. Check with your team and peers to see if they have any reliable forecasts. For Hot Wheels, the chart on the left of the slide is showing industry forecast data sourced from an external analyst company. If this data is unavailable, you could build your own forecast using a compound annual growth rate. The formula is shown in the slide for reference, and if this was applied to the chart to measure Hot Wheels sales growth in Asia between 2012 and 2017, the growth rate would be 19%. And for price projections, consult your marketing or finance colleagues for estimates. If no reliable data is available, you can use inflation data as a proxy for movements in car prices, as shown in the chart on the right of the slide. With the volume and pricing data now gathered in Excel from various sources, it is possible to derive a revenue forecast for Hot Wheels, as shown in the slide on row 44. For the light commercial vehicle segment forecast, you can assume the share was pretty stable at 3% of total revenues. Row 45 shows the total revenue forecast for Hot Wheels out to 2022. In summary, when forecasting your revenues, it is important to choose a forecasting methodology that is appropriate for the business case. Time permitting, you should also consider building a driver tree to easily visualize the underlying factors which can affect your organization's operations. 
such as revenue and cost. And when forecasting revenues, take time to add the historical driver data to your spreadsheet. Then forecast based on one or more of the following sources. Internal projections, industry databases, analyst estimates, and your own estimates. Finally, derive the revenue forecast using the drivers you projected. Thank you for participating and see you next time on another exciting business training lesson from Pontema.